Kia ora everyone and welcome back. Today I'm covering my top 5 units in Civilization 6 and some honourable mentions along the way. These are units you should not sleep on. These are probably the best units in the game. You're probably going to want to build them every game, whether you're attacking or defending. So without any further ado, let me jump straight in. At number 5, I have the Knight. Why? Well, the Knight is an early, relatively early unit anyway. It is also a fast unit. You can look at that movement, right? At least four tiles and 48 melee strength. That is really strong, particularly in the era of the game where it's introduced. I would also add that uh, with the addition of trebuchets from the latest update, we have a really nice natural pairing of trebuchets to defeat enemy walls and knights to run in fast, to pillage, to destroy enemy units and flee to safety. You really can't understate the maneuverability of the knight and its relative power, like I say, to the point where you get it, is very, very strong. Also, its upgrade path and technology path is great as well. You can see there, it does actually upgrade into tanks, So you and, and it upgrades from heavy chariots, another unit you've probably utilised. So really useful across the board, and that's why it comes in at my number five slot. At number four, it's the bomber, and this is a unit that I think probably is the most rare unit on my list. The reason being, well, you need an aerodrome district, which is perhaps a lower priority for a lot of players. Uh, and secondly, I think that overall we tend to focus less on uh, air units because they can't be seen as easily on the map, right? So we sort of fundamentally, I think, neglect them. Here's why you shouldn't neglect the bomber, and in particularly why I think the bomber is better than the jet bomber that it replaces. So, the bomber is easy kills. All day, every day easy kills. Reason being, it is difficult for your opponents to have anti-air at the time when you unlock the bomber. The reason why I think it's better than the jet bomber is because by the time you're unlocking jet bombers, anti-air is potentially more prevalent. Your opponents are more likely to have anti-air. But with the bomber, because it's unlocked relatively early with air flight, uh, you can basically go unchallenged a lot of the time, providing of course you're not too far behind, right? So the bomber is unchallenged, it deals really great damage. You can absolutely risk control of the skies because of how early you get it. The AI is rarely likely to have anything to defend against it. And to be honest, even your fellow human opponents, if you're playing in multiplayer, aren't very likely to have anti-air at this point in the game. And that is why I think the bomber is really understated, undervalued unit in Civilization VI. Moving through into number three, we can't go anywhere without bombards. Now I will add an honourable mention here, actually two. Uh, the first honourable mention is the artillery, that is uh, what comes after the bombard, and it has exactly the same strengths as the bombard does, so you can consider them one and the same for the purpose of this video. Uh, and secondly I would add the trebuchet is of course a nice addition that you get before the bombard, and it doesn't require um, niter like the bombard uh, or artillery may. Now. That being said, let's actually talk about why these are useful. These are fundamentally useful because of walls. Walls are a real pain in the backside in Civ 6, and much better than they were in Civ 5. There are, of course, three different types, ancient, uh, renaissance, medieval walls, and um, you really do need some siege units if you want to destroy them. And uh, so if you're not able to rush down your opponent quickly at the, in the early game, then you're going to need at least a bombard, right? Maybe two, likewise with artillery. But these things absolutely destroy district defences and walls. You need need these if you want to take a city, okay? Do not underestimate the importance of having some units that are specifically designed to destroy district defences. I'm looking particularly at the bombard, okay? You cannot sleep on them. You need these to destroy to destroy walls. Just absolutely you need them. You can plink at your opponents from afar with them as well, so they're relatively easy to use and defend. The only thing is they do maneuver quite slowly, and that is one of their big downsides. So you need to make sure that you have some defensive support. Again, I heart back to the knight and the two next units that I'm about to cover, which I do believe are the best units in the game. In at my number two slot, it is the archer. 
the humble archer. Upgrades from the slinger, the first ranged unit available in the game, and upgrades into the crossbowman, which historically uh, throughout Civ 6 has actually been better than the archer, but I argue now that the archer is actually the best unit uh, for the early game particular and of course for ranged combat. Why? Well, because it's so universal, it can defend or attack. In early game, even on deity, with two or three archers, you can basically defend from any onslaught, right? You can keep one garrisoned in your city, you can keep the others on vantage points like hills, for example, uh, and really just rain down fire on your opponent. Likewise, for offense, if you're attacking before your opponent has walls, which you can absolutely do because you can beeline archers and unlock them really fast, you can take out a city with, I would say, roughly four archers. Again, depending on difficulty, you might be able to get away with two or three. You may need four to five. But either way, these things are incredibly powerful on offense in ancient era combat. You'll strike down units before they can even get close to you like warriors. And like I say, have a really good chance at uh, attacking enemy cities before they get walls. That makes the archer, I argue, the most versatile unit in the game. It's early, it's aggressive, it's strong, it's defensive, it's everything you want in a unit and more. It also, uh, the Eureka for it is really easy to get if you have some slingers, you just need to get some slingers and get out there and, and destroy a unit, you know, like it's, it's really simple and straightforward to get archers very quickly, and I think you'll never regret building at least two or three archers throughout the early game. And that brings us to, last but not least, number one. No, it's not the giant death robot, it's actually the swordsman. But but before you go away in disgust, let me tell you why. The giant death robot is unlocked very late in the game, uh, and that unfortunately makes it quite useless. If you're at that point, why are you not going for a science victory? Uh, there are some use cases, I'll admit, but the swordsman, I argue, has many, many, many more use cases. Let me tell you why. It partners really fantastically with the siege tower. That makes it actually quite easy for you to besiege cities with the support of perhaps one additional siege unit. You're going to be away laughing. The swordsman is the best pair for the siege tower. But it has more than that. It has much more than that going for it. It also partners incredibly well, of course, with the battering ram. The swordsman will be your main strong military unit, your main strong melee military unit in the early game. And the final reason why I think this is the best unit, not only because of its really strong power, its easy upgrade from warriors, its relatively easy build, all you need is ironworking, but because along its tech tree you get the encampment, which is really important and another benefit towards that war machine. Thank you so much for watching. These have been my top five units in Civilization VI. And until next time, I'll catch you then.